Welcome to another edition of Our City. A few things going around the city of Elizabeth this week. On Wednesday, May 17th, I'm going to attend some events in honor of Police Week. First, a blue mass at St. Genevieve's Church. Uh, we will begin at 10 o'clock in the morning. The church is located at 200 Monmouth Road. Next, there will be a wreath laying ceremony following the mass at Elizabeth Police Headquarters. And later that evening at 530, I'm going to join the Greater Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce, their business after hours social networking event. We'll be located at Don Felix Bar and Restaurant, and that's at 559 Elizabeth Avenue. For more information, call the chamber, 908-355-7600. Following that event, the Elizabeth Coalition to House the Homeless is going to have their annual reception dinner. It will be at the Grand Summit Hotel in Summit, New Jersey. For more information, please call 908-355-2060. And on Thursday, May 18th, around 1030 in the morning, I'm going to present a proclamation in honor of National Nursing Home Week to the Elizabeth Nursing Home, located at 1048 Grove Street. And at 1130 a.m. in the morning, a grand open and ribbon cutting of the Glow Nail Bar, located 416 Morris Avenue. And that afternoon, there will be a fun presentation of the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra. They will present a concert at the Una Festa Musicale Italiana, a musical tour of Italy. It will be held at the Peterstown Community Center, located at 408 Palmer Street. For more information, call the Office on Aging at 908-820-4044. And later that evening, the Elizabeth Cubanos Lions Club at 5 o'clock and other Elizabeth residents will join me for the Cuban flag raising outside of City Hall at 50 Winfield Scott Plaza. And immediately after that, I'm going to join the second annual Lead Day Jamboree, which was formerly our D.A.R.E. program. This will begin at 530. The Elizabeth Municipal Alliance Committee It will be held at the Exlaven Recreation Center located on 513 Richmond Street. For more information, call 908-820-4050. We're also going to discuss this event in the beginning segment of this evening's show. On Friday, May 19th, the fifth annual Old Time Dance Party, which will be held at the Stephen Sampson Senior Center, located at 800 Anna Street. For more information, please call the center at 908 908- 820-4707. And on Saturday, May 20th, starting at 8 o'clock in the morning till noon, the Rotary Club of Elizabeth will have their 43rd annual Pancake Breakfast held at Benedictine Academy, located 840 North Broad Street. For more information, call the Rotary, 908-355-2060. And that afternoon at 3 o'clock, I'm going to attend a book launch Forgotten Pieces, a Life Skills Guide for Teens and Young Adults by an Elizabeth author, Monique Singleton. This event will be held at Dolce's Lounge and Bar at 17 Broad Street. For more information, please contact 188-677-6129. We're also going to visit with Monique on next week's show. On Sunday, May 21st at 9 o'clock in the morning, the 14th annual Tour de Elizabeth, a family-friendly 15-mile recreational tour of our most historic neighborhoods in the city of Elizabeth. This year's ride is titled Sounds of the City. It will begin and end at City Hall. Riders will pedal through the diverse streets of our community, the business districts. They're going to hear from local musicians, area schools throughout Union County, for more information, please call Groundwork Elizabeth, 908-289-0262. And later that afternoon at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the Hispanic Law Enforcement Association of Union County will host the third annual Heroes on the Court three-on-three basketball tournament. This will be at Kane University in the Harwood Arena. I was there last year, and it was a lot of fun. We're also going to talk about that in the second segment of tonight's show. On Tuesday, May 23rd, I, along with members of the City Council, 
the directors of the numerous departments, will participate in our annual Youth in Government Day. During this event, students from Elizabeth Public Schools are paired with a city official for the day, learning about municipal government and our city at large. The students are designated to act in an official capacity of their representatives that they are paired with for the day. For more information, please call the clerk's office at 908-820-4130. If you need more information concerning these events or any other events, please call our public information office at 908-820-4124. Please stay with us after these messages. We'll be back more to talk about our LEAD program. We have some of the finest teachers in the country. And then they graduate. Kane University. Welcome back to our city, where I'm pleased to be joined by lead officer, Jen Perez. Jen, welcome. Welcome. Thank you Good for having Good to see me. you. And a Elizabeth Police Department member, uh, also Donald Johnson, supervisor of the Office of Youth. You Donald, don't. welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So, Officer Perez, uh, start with you. What's the LEAD program? Uh, LEAD program, uh, what LEAD stands for is Law Enforcement Against Drugs. Um, most people, when we say LEAD, they have no idea what that is. So we have to explain, it used to be known as the D.A.R.E. program. Um, things have changed, therefore the name has changed. So um, basically we go into the classroom, we teach kids um, a bunch of things that can help them in life in general. Um, we have a curriculum that we follow. So that's basically what the LEAD program and, is. And Jen, a, a typical LEAD class is you get these, they're fifth or sixth grade kids. Fifth grade. And, and, and what's a typical class like when you get these kids in there? They probably look at you and say, oh, there's a lady oh, with a gun here. Yeah. In the beginning, we get a lot of kids. We walk in and it's like, oh, the police are here. You know, they get scared. Um, and I think it's, a, it's great because some of them, they fear us. But when we get in there and they get to know us, they see that we're regular people. Um, we have, like I said, we have a curriculum we follow. So it's, it's almost like being a teacher in a sense, teaching them certain lessons, but lessons that they wouldn't learn typically in school. And we, we teach them to stay off of drugs, alcohol, and we also, do yeah. we work in a bullying component in there too? We, yes, there's some of that. There's, uh, we teach them about goals. We teach them about um, consequences. We learn um, about managing our emotions. Uh, they also learn about um, communication skills. Then we get into the peer pressure, and then that's when we go into alcohol marijuana and other street drugs and tobacco. So did you take the D.A.R.E. program? I actually did not. I went to school in California and they started it after I left. They didn't have a D.A.R.E. program? They did, but they started it after, like a year after I left okay. uh, the elementary school. So Donald, did you take a D.A.R.E. program? No, I didn't. You didn't either? No, I didn't. Oh, you two turned out pretty good, right? <laughs> yes. yes. But I think the program really works for these kids, right? Yeah. I mean, they get to learn at a young age the negativity of drugs and alcohol. Yes. So, Donald, uh, some of the vendors in the upcoming, first of all, talk about the Jamboree. We've been doing it for a couple of years now. We bring everybody together, and uh, what, what happens at the Jamboree? Oh, it's a great day for everyone to come out, all families, all different, from diverse throughout the entire city, come out and have a good time, a safe, wonderful environment. We provide petting zoo, um, bouncy houses, all types of events to keep everybody entertained throughout the entire time. And Donald, the uh, Dare Jamboree is a celebration of these young kids graduating the program. Yes. And and when you you, you get that helicopter back? Yeah, that was also pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty cool. I got a kick out of the heli. The helicopters by who? Uh, well, state police comes out with their helicopter and also the National Guard. Last year we had two, so oh, we did. Um, we did. We had two helicopters last year, um, which could be subject to change if they have an emergency, obviously. But right. uh, the kids love it. And it's pretty cool because they usually land while the kids are there and take off. So. That's pretty cool for them. To and Jen, see. if there's ever an emergency in town, that's where the helicopters actually land, right? Yeah, if we have that's to one of the landing people. sites, yes. It's one of them in yes. our city. Mm -hmm. So um, what are some of the vendors involved, Don, in the, in the uh, Jamboree? Um, we have Shape and Elizabeth. Uh, we have Cadillac Grilling is going to provide the food throughout the entire town. We have a petting zoo that's coming. We have Pollo Campero. That's actually going to bring their mascot. How's he doing with his Spanish? <laughs> He's doing good. I yeah. approve. Okay. Cool. We're actually going to bring their mascot, Porito. Yeah, for yes. Ito, um, he's going to come by, and then we have face painting, the EMS, and the Elizabeth Fire Department as well. And you also have sponsors on top of the vendors. Yes, we do. We Who have the Where city of Elizabeth. We have our Health and Human Service Department that's actually coming as well, and our Recreation Department, EMS, and Fire as well. So, Jen, when the students graduate from the LEAD program and 
we want to pat them on the back and we celebrate. This Absolutely. is one of the ways we do it. But w- w- when, when they complete the LEAD program, what exactly do you do? There's other things you do as well. Uh, we have a graduation for them every year. Um, it's, it's exciting. It's uh, a chance for all of them to get together. They get together with the other schools that are also taking the program. Uh, we do an essay contest, so they actually have to write an essay. We pick a winner. Um, we honor them at the graduation. They get a diploma. They get a medal. And they also get a, the winner gets a stuffed animal. So the, the, <laughs> the essays they write, Yes. you must have fun reading some of these, I right? I do. Yeah. I do. So have, have any stood out through the years? I have some. Yeah. I have some that um, I save a lot of them. Um, some of them go in a box, but there's some that I know someday there's something I'm going to revert back to with certain kids um, that stand out. And I know that one day I'll see them again. Really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. So the... The lead day jamboree, is it structured or just they all show up and just do whatever they want? What do you... Pretty much. Pretty much. Enjoy themselves. <laughs> enjoy it's, themselves. Yeah, right? not like class time where you have to sit in your seat, stay still, you know, they get to actually enjoy. And it's kind of cool, too, is they actually get to hang out with us. So, you know, we walk around and, you know, actually get to talk to them and get to know them a little bit better and stuff. So. And Don, one of the things you do is the, the hot dog truck or whatever is always... Yeah. The, that's pretty cool. Um, we get to feed them. Anytime yeah. that you feed, you know, the city, everybody comes out and gets to enjoy. And the hot dog truck is awesome. And they, I think they're going to provide pretzels as well. Pretzels? Little, yeah. Oh, I got to get one of those. Yeah, you gotta get you one of those. Yeah, yeah. Say the best part is everything is free. Yeah. I know. Everything is free. So the, the, the kids, and they get to come out with their parents, too, or their uncles or their aunts or somebody, Siblings, right? Siblings, yeah. And they kind of walk through there and have a little bit of fun. Mm-hmm. So on the... On the uh, so Darren, the mascot, Jen, what, what is, what, there's a mascot for lead? So is that different than a for mascot Dare, for Dare? Yeah. Dare, we had um, Darren, the lion. Um, for lead, we have Leo. Leo is actually a Labrador. Um, I, I think I like Leo a little more. He's actually wearing like a police uniform. He's got like the bulletproof vest going. Um, he looks pretty cool. So you prefer to lecture about Leo than Darren? I like Leo, yeah. yeah. I like Leo. And it just so happens that Leo, L-E-O, also stands for law enforcement officers. So. Yeah. I'm sure they thought, do <laughs> you think they thought of that? I don't know if they thought of that, but um, it does. So what's it cost, Donald, to get into the Dare Day Jamboree, and where's the location? Oh, it's free. It's free for everyone. Free admission for everybody that comes by. And the location is 513 Richmond Street, which is our Fred Ursley in the center here in Elizabeth. And... Uh, it's all fifth graders that it took the program, but right. they bring some little kids with them too, right? Brothers yeah, or sisters? Brothers, sisters, cousins, aunties, uncles, everybody comes to that day. And w- what do you think the younger kids think of this, Donald? I mean, they, they get to pet some animals, but I mean, do you think any of the kids, I guess, tell their younger brother or sister what they're learning in the LEAD program? I think they do. And also the fact that you get to see the law enforcement there as well. And actually everybody's getting along, working together, and having a great time together. It's a huge plus to our community. So, Officer Perez, one of the things that uh, you mentioned in the beginning of the show, which is really interesting, is uh, teaching these kids in uniform. Yes. As opposed to coming in civilian clothes like, you know, dress pants and a skirt or something like that. Do you think there's a difference? Yes, I do. Tell us about Um, it. Well, one of the things, like I I mentioned before, is a lot of times kids initially, they're afraid of us. Um, And going in there and seeing that we're regular people, we have regular feelings, we do regular things, we live regular lives. You know, we're mothers, you know, fathers. Um, They get to see that we're not like these robots. You know, they think that we're officers, we come out in the middle of the night, it's, you know, they see that we live regular lives. Um, And for some of these kids, there's some kids who've never had a good experience with the police and may never have. So working with us gives them an opportunity to see that, you know, we're not the bad guy. You know, we're the good guys. We're here to help What's the interaction like? I mean, do do, do they warm up to you by the end? Yeah, yeah. they do. And it's great. You know, you see them in the halls and a lot of them run up to you. They want to hug you. Um, It's like they found a new friend, you know. That's probably the most important part of the... Anything that can happen during the The rewarding course. part of it. How long does the D.A.R.E. program, uh, the LEAD program last? How many weeks? Uh, it could, well, there's 10 different lessons that we teach. So the program can be that long, maybe even a long, little longer. Some of the lessons may take two weeks to complete. Okay. Then so. it depends on weather, too, right? If weather may cancel school or something. So yeah, weather, you know, testing, whatever else. They have so going on. maybe I shouldn't ask this question, but who, who do you think adapts better, boys or girls, in the fifth grade to this <sighs> lesson? You know what? <clears throat> I honestly have to say both. There's, yeah. it's, 
sometimes... Good political answer, anyway. <laughs> it, no, it is. What happens is it, sometimes you reach kids that you didn't think you would reach. You know, I've had students who are like that one kid that's always getting into trouble who sometimes end up being my favorite. You know, I end up having like a closer bond with some of them. And they, they really do make a complete turnaround, some of them. Good. Donald, so uh, one more time, if someone wants to call information about the program, who they call? Uh, they would call our lead and EMAC coordinator, um, Andrea Topping, at 908-820-4050. I want to thank the two of you for taking the time to join me on the show thank you for having this us. evening, and I look forward to seeing you at the Lead Day Jamboree. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> for Donald Johnson and Officer Jennifer Perez, please stay with us after these messages. We'll be talking with Hispanic law enforcement officers of Union County. We're an American original, dependable, historic, nuanced, with all the comforts of home, even when you're just visiting. So we're celebrating for all that we've left untouched and all that we've changed. A place where the past meets the future. So consider this your invitation. We've been celebrating here in Elizabeth for 350 years, and we're just getting started. Welcome back to our city. For the second half of the show, I'm joined by members of the Hispanic Law Enforcement Association of Union County, the president of the organization, Elizabeth Police Officer Luis Damando. Luis, welcome. Thank you for having us. The vice president, uh, Sergeant Alberto Velez of the Hillside Police Department. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Thank you, Mayor. And Officer Jen Perez, who was on the first part, I guess you're a muckety-muck or a big deal or a member of the organization. <laughs> secretary. <laughs> you're the secretary of the organization. Well, thanks for sticking around for the second part no of the show. Um, so first of all, gentlemen, why don't you guys, you know, Jen's been on the show before. Uh, so, Lewis, tell me about yourself. How would you get to be uh, Elizabeth Police Officer? Well, I uh, grew up in Elizabeth. Um, I've been serving our, our city for about 13 years now. I started as an auxiliary police officer in 2004, and now I work out of the uh, community police uh, division. And I'm also a member of the emergency service unit for, for our town. And Alberto, how long? Uh, I've been uh, in the department about 14 years. I was uh, born and raised in Hillside. Uh, I, I got into the department a little later in my life. Uh, I worked telecom and uh, got into the department, and I've been a sergeant since uh, November. Good. And Jen, you've been on for a few years. Uh, I'm on my 18th year as a police officer. Yes, I was actually uh, born Elizabeth, but I was raised in California. And you're also active with the Hispanic Law Enforcement Association. Yes. Yes. So the, the basketball game that you do, I went to the game last year, and uh, you guys aren't, like, real tall and big. So who, <laughs> why did you pick basketball for this competition? Well, we, we tried football, but too many of our guys were getting hurt, so <laughs> yeah. we had to scrap that I remember idea. that game, too. Yeah. yeah. But um, growing up... Especially in Elizabeth, uh, that was uh, one of my favorite sports. I played in junior high school. I played uh, in high school. So, um, you know, I, I'm also involved with our department when uh, we play the fire department or when we play the sheriff's department. So I came up with an idea to kind of unite law enforcement throughout the state, not only in Elizabeth or Union County, but something that we could bring all, you know, law enforcement agencies, the fire department, any first responder that, uh, that wanted to part, uh, participate in our event to show them what we're doing in our community and, and to, to get involved. So, and how many Hillside officers are gonna play, Sergeant? Uh, we have a split team in Hillside, Hillside Fire and a full team fire, from my understanding, and, uh, Do you play? Uh, no, I'm gonna be volunteering. You're, you're uh, the organizer uh, of the yeah, Hillside Yeah, I wasn't really too good at basketball, so I'll be volunteering. I'll be on the sidelines and helping out. Neither yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jen, you playing? I played one year. I, no. no, it's not going to happen, no, huh? No. We'll, not try, we'll try to get her. We'll get her to do something, we'll, right? We also have females playing. Well, you also told me, uh, officer, that some guys backed out this year, right? Carlos Torres, Sergio Gr uh. Granados, uh, some elected officials are just, you run them ragged, right? Yeah, you know, I don't know if they, they haven't been in the gym in a while or if they're out of shape. <laughs> I but, think they're uh, out of shape, and when I see those guys, I want to tell them. I think they're a little intimidated. I'm going to tell them they were bounced from the game because they're out of shape. Especially Carlos. He's a, he's a good talker, but uh, when, it, when it comes to translate on the court, it does, yeah. he doesn't uh, meet our criteria. You made criteria. my day by saying that. It's good. <laughs> so this is the third annual Heroes of Court basketball game. How, and how, how did it actually get started? You touched on it where you said bringing people together, but you also make donations. So how did it all get started? Well, um, we are our primary... Uh, mission statement for our association is to uh, 
to give back in, in the sense of higher education. So we, we try to uh, financially assist those in, in need, especially our youth. So we established uh, a couple of accounts here in, uh, at Kane University, also at Union County College. So with the, all the proceeds that we generate from this, um, from this event gets donated towards them. And it goes towards helping kids stay in college, right? Yes. Over the last three years, we were able to give uh, over 20 scholarships. And who won the first couple of games, first two years? We actually have uh, our two-time defending champions, uh, Franklin Township. But uh, I was informed that they won't be able to attend this year, so the trophy's up for grabs. Oh, so you threw them out? No, no. Oh. I, you know, I, I don't know if they... Uh, I know the one guy, uh, was he's going on vacation that weekend, so he won't be available. And his teammates, I guess they can't play without him. Oh, is that a deal? That's what it's. Well, I like. think that deserves to be some ribbing somewhere along yes. the way. You know, I, uh, I I did tell them they have to drop off the trophy because it's a it's a traveling trophy, so they want it, to. It's going to get awarded to the our, our new champion this year. So so, uh, Sergeant, do they schedule practices in Hillside? Do you know what are they uh, doing to get ready for this game? I would hope so. I would hope so that they're getting ready for it. Uh, uh, usually, the guys in the Hillside Fire and Police Department, uh, they they do love volunteering for these uh, sort of things and. Uh, they are looking forward to it, so let's see if they could uh, put in a good showing and grab that show trophy for the township. So how many different <laughs> townships are participating, do you know? We oh. have uh, first responders from, uh, from th throughout Union County. We have state, county corrections. We have federal law, uh, law enforcement. We have fire departments from... Uh, Port Authority. Port Authority. Port Authority. They usually have a good showing. Um, our two finalists last year was uh, Franklin Township and Linden Fire, and they, they played again in the finals last year so they so both teams made it to the finals both times correct so tell me tell me how does this work three on three and tell me the rules of the game well it's uh it's a three on three half court game this year we're going to do something different to kind of uh manage the the time we're going to have uh, a five uh, five minute game clock so it's the the first team to score seven or whoever has the lead after the five minutes are up and each basket counts for one one point do you have fouls in this game? Yeah, we have fouls, but no foul shots. So they'll, they'll just retain possession of the ball. Okay. So, and, and I, I, before the show started, I was a bit taken aback that the teams can't get the seven within five minutes. It's, uh, it's it must a be pretty intense at times. There must be some <laughs> hacking going on, something, right? I like to say they, they play good defense, but it's also a combination of uh, bad offense. Bad. <laughs> so are there any other players participating who, who may have played professionally or semi-pro or any officers who college maybe unfortunately a lot of these guys that that do play they like to keep it a secret we have a, a couple like ringer teams i know uh like, like like i just mentioned the franklin township team the uh one of the members played division two basketball in college but um other than that I, I don't know any professionals that are playing so okay yeah, what, don johnson from the city was on the first part of the show I yes mean. He, he's he got to register, the, but uh, he, he committed to playing this year. He played with a globe trot. I don't think he can shoot anymore, though. Yeah, we'll see. Hopefully he can still dribble. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully he can still <laughs> dribble. Um, so, Hispanic Law Enforcement, what are some of the other charities you guys are involved in? Uh, get involved with, uh, they do a Toys for Tots. Uh, we do, they have coat drives. Uh, we also have, um, if I can remember. Uh, we did Easter basket Easter donations. Easter baskets. We like to work with a lot of uh, the local churches. Uh, especially during the holiday season, like Jen mentioned, we uh, we did something to, 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 together for Easter, where we uh, donated these Easter baskets, which had non-perishable food, and, we, and along with those baskets, we gave out gift cards for uh, so they can have dinner. And recently, this past Christmas, we did a, a toy and coat drive, and there we provided uh, kids with uh, brand new coats and and food. I guess that's really welcome for some kids who may be living on the edge to get some brand new coats for the winter uh, throughout the community. So it's really a great thing that you do. Is there, is there a price, a donation amount expected from the people coming to the games or the teams? We ask for uh, a $10 donation. We'll be selling tickets um, online or in person. They could uh, go on our website, which is hleauc.org, and you can purchase the tickets there. And it's $10. Uh, the viewers of where and when, tell us exactly where and when this event's taking place. This uh, event's taking place May 21st. Uh, the event starts at 2 o'clock here at uh, Kane University at the Hardwood Arena. And how long does it take? Uh, this runs three, four, five hours? Uh, we're going to try to control that. Uh, in years past, uh, it, it went a little longer than, than three hours. But now that the, the games are being timed, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go a lot faster. So are there referees? Yes, there is. 
There is. Yes. And they, I hope they volunteered. Yeah, they, vo they we, everybody that's involved with this event, it's not just only our members, there's uh, other members, other community leaders that help out. Uh, they get referees to volunteer, they get students to uh, help with the concession stand. Uh, we're also going to be doing uh, raffles throughout the event. So it's going to be a great time. We also have a face painter for the kids to keep them busy while the uh, parents are playing. Jennifer, go ahead. We have, uh, I think we forgot to mention this year, um, also we decided that we were going to make another donation to uh, Basketball Cop Foundation, which I don't know if you're familiar with. I am not. Tell um, me about that. Okay, Basketball Cop Foundation was started by an officer in Gainesville, Florida. His name is Bobby White. Uh, you may have seen the YouTube video of him playing, and uh, he went out to a noise complaint and started playing basketball with the kids. And oh, I did see that video. Shaq came out to be his backup. Yeah. Um, our friend Shaq. <laughs> and, yeah, he was uh, in Elizabeth not long he ago. He was, actually. He was at my daughter's class. Right. So um, I actually made friends with Bobby White through that. Um, so far, Bobby White has donated to our city two basketball rims um, to the city of Elizabeth, which we went out and donated to. Um, one was the church, uh, I think it's first, I can't think of the name of it, on Fifth and Court. We donated one basketball rim, and then we donated Liberty another Baptist. One. Liberty Baptist, that's it. Um, we donated one room there. Um, and another one to another church. Um, so this year we decided to make a donation also to his foundation. Good. So maybe we'll get some more rims in the county. Uh, yeah, that'd be fun. Or maybe you can get Shaq to come and play. That would be awesome. Yeah, he does <laughs> come back every so long. That happens, yes. then you'll see Carlos there. And yes. you'll see Carlos, yeah. yeah right. Yes. I want to say, are, are there any, uh, didn't ask you, you're not playing, but are there any other women play? There, there are females from other departments that do play. Okay. Yeah. I know there's one correction officer. She comes like the last two years I've seen her. She's really good. She yeah, works she, at the uh, Union County uh, Jail here in Elizabeth. And she's a good yes. player, huh? Really good. Maybe yes. they'll win. Keep it in Union County okay. this year. They, they, they've be been nice. close, but uh, now, like I said, that Franklin Township isn't playing this year. So it's, it's, up, up for it's, it's up for grabs. I want to thank the three of you for joining me on the show. I wish thank you lots you. of luck for the money that you raise for these charitable organizations, and I appreciate the efforts of the Hispanic Law Enforcement Association of Union County. Thanks for joining me. I'd just thank like to you. thank you again for having us. You've always showed your uh, support for our association, thank and we you. really appreciate that. I want to thank Donald Johnson on the first part of the show and Officer Jen Perez, who was on both parts of the show, Officer Luis Demando and Sergeant Alberto Velez. And please join us next week for another edition of Our City. We're creating tomorrow's jobs today. Kane University.